Alex is on the road today, somewhere in California, but I'm here. So after today's episode, if you still don't like the road testament, you'll have one person to blame. That's me. Last week, one of the most legendary drivers of the auto industry died. Harumu Nuruse has been with Toyota since 1967, and he died in a head-on collision while testing the new Lexus LFA at the Nürburgring last week. In his memory, and for your education, we're going to talk about how car manufacturers test new vehicles to make sure they're safe for you and I to drive to work. That's today on a studio edition of The Road Test. I'm a car salesman from the 70s. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's American. We're going to talk about some American cars. Hey, everybody. Is your lovely wife? Uh, yeah, yeah. She's a beaut. My name is Bob Shubin Jr., and I love you. Hey. All right, hey, everybody. I'll tell you that, all right? Yeah, there it is right there. Hey, everybody. Hey, how are you? And that's how we do it. It's New York City. Last week's fatal Lexus LFA crash at the Nürburgring wasn't the first of its kind. In the past year, we've had a Porsche engineer killed while driving a prototype 911, a Mercedes engineer seriously hurt when flipping a prototype GLK, even a Pagani C9 accident on the Autobahn. These engineers pushed these prototypes to the limit, far further than any one of us would ever attempt while driving on public roads or even at the track. So why do these engineers test these cars the way they do? It takes anywhere between 2 and 15 years and millions, if not billions of dollars in development. The B5 chassis Audi A4, the first of a new era of Audi, cost the company upwards of $900 million by some reports. But that car stayed in production for close to seven years and paved the way for all future Audi products. The Bugatti Veyron it was a decade-long project. The Porsche PDK transmission has been in development since the mid-1980s and it was only released two years ago. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the new Ford Taurus. When Alan Mulally joined the Ford family, he fast-tracked the Taurus into production. By some accounts, that car went from design to showroom in only two years. But after a car reaches its design lock, it goes into extensive prototype testing for upwards of a year or more. You've got the, the basic track testing within secret test facilities. Ferrari has the Fiorano test circuit that is not only used for their F1 cars, but also prototypes for next generation vehicles like the 458. But of course, the mother of all test circuits is the Nürburgring Nordschleife circuit. At the ring, because of the diversity of the track's features, a single lap can test nearly every component of the car. Outside of the Nürburgring, you've got cold weather testing in northern Sweden. Tests include everything from making sure your brake lines don't freeze, to making sure your ABS and traction control systems work in the cold. High altitude testing in Colorado to starve the engines of air, to ensure the air to fuel ratios adjust properly, and hot weather testing in South Africa or Death Valley to heat soak the engines to the limit. These engineers bring these vehicles literally around the world. Many times, things do go wrong. The accidents I mentioned before could have been a result of driver error or mechanical failure. The point is, these guys testing these cars put their lives on the line for you and me. Most of the time when automotive journalists find faults with a car, it's bullshit because trust me, these engineers look at these cars like they're their babies. They won't let an error go out the door. So today's episode is a tribute to all those men and women who have brought the modern technologies of the auto industry to our fingertips. That's it for today. See you next week on The Road Testament. Mm -hmm.